Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at creating a thread which will update our surface regularly. So we want to do frame by frame animation and that means that we want um, what's called a game loop somewhere and that's kind of a loop that runs continuously and updates our surface probably as often as possible. And so we're going to implement that in this tutorial. and. I don't want to turn this into a tutorial on game programming as such, although we are going to cover the basics, partly because I've never written a professional kind of game. Um, so I'm going to try to keep it with the Android, but inevitably in discussing animation, we're going to have to discuss some stuff that's uh, pretty much used in uh, more or less any kind of game. And there's uh, nearly always going to be some kind of Android twist on what we do, although I will show you some kind of things that are just kind of generic game programming things and not Android specific. So I'm going to create here a new class, um, not here because that's the wrong project, here. I'm going to click my package. Uh, I'm just bringing everything into the same package for this tutorial again. And uh, I'm sure it's possible to structure this code better than I'm going to do, but I just want to try to keep it really simple for demonstration purposes here. So I'll create a new class and I'm going to call this game runner. And this is going to be a thread whose responsibility um, is to update the surface frame by frame um, at, at least sort of 25 times a second or something, if possible. So I'm going to say public class game runner in, um, extends thread. And I'm going to use the thread class here and you might wonder why I don't want to use async task here and that's because I want to bypass here the kind of normal Android mechanism which you find in pretty much any GUI system of um, all these systems usually have a, a way of posting updates to a kind of a thread which processes a queue and paints the user interface when necessary and because this is going to be a game and this is true for any kind of really serious animation. You want to force updates to happen when you say they should happen. So you don't want to just post an update to a user interface thread and let it update the user interface when it feels like it's, you know, when it feels like it's a good idea. You want to say, right, now it's time to update the user interface, do it. And that's why we're creating a kind of separate thread here. It's, um, it's a thread that is going to directly update the user interface and async task is not intended to do that. It's intended to avoid um, directly updating the user interface which will cause problems under most circumstances. So I'm going to just right click here and go to source override implement methods and I'm going to override the run method and if you want more information about multi-threading um, on www.caveofprogramming.com you can find a free course on multi-threading but we're, gonna, uh, we're only going to be used, using really simple multi-threading here basically, nothing complex. And um, so I've got this run method and this is the method that's going to run my game loop and I'm going to, up here I'm going to have a private volatile boolean called running and I'm going to set that equal to true. And down here in run, we're going to say while running, and we're going to draw stuff here, draw stuff and update the game. And um, the reason this is volatile is because uh, threads can, in theory, cache variables. They won't always do it but they can decide to cache a variable if they see that that variable is not updated from the thread itself. And so if you if you have two threads accessing the same variable, you need to at least make it volatile. And if it's something other than a Boolean, like an integer, you're going to have to have synchronization. But here, it's only going to be a, a Boolean variable. And we're going to make it volatile so that all threads can see the current state of that variable. And that's really just a hypothetical danger. And in practice, this would probably work 
without volatile but just to be doubly sure we'll put that in there and um, I'm going to make this game draw at full tilt so it's going to refresh the screen as often as possible but just for the moment let's put in a thread dot sleep to kind of slow things down a little bit and uh, say thread dot sleep I don't know 300 so that's like roughly three times a second that this loop's going to execute and I'll handle the interrupted exception there and for demo purposes in this tutorial I'm just going to have a log.d in there so let's say log.d that's really why I'm putting thread.sleep in I don't want to output log messages as fast as possible because that will really slow down my Eclipse and if you literally want to make a game then you probably don't want that in there you probably want the screen to refresh as often as possible to make it as playable as possible but on the other hand if you want to do animation that's part of some kind of application that isn't a game and it does other things besides um, you know besides refreshing the screen and drawing the screen then you might well want a thread.sleep in there so that your application isn't absolutely doing animation full tilt but will hopefully you know have the kind of energy the CPU cycles to do other stuff at the same time but here we're not going to worry about that because I want it to go full tilt and to use as, as much of the resources of the phone as possible to actually make my game work so I'm going to take this out later on but I'll put it in for the minute and uh, we need some way of stopping this by setting the running boolean volatile boolean variable to false so I'm going to give this a method public void shut down we can't call it stop because thread already has a method called stop and I'm going to say public void shut down and in there I'm just going to say running equals false and if we didn't make running volatile in theory this could be ignored if it's called from another thread which it is going to be called from another thread but uh, it is a theoretical possibility and now back in my game view here I'm going to create a let's have a private variable that holds one of these game runners which I'll call runner and what I'll do is um, when the surface is created here then I want to stop my game running so I want to say runner equals new game runner and then I call runner.start and that tells the thread class to go to the public void run method and to run it and that's going to enter our game loop here which ultimately is going to do our animation by drawing the screen and in surface destroyed I want to stop runner from running so I'm going to say if runner is um, in fact uh, yeah I think that's right if runner is, is not equal to null let's say let's check that it's not null and I'll say runner dot shut down so we're telling it to shut down and now what I want to do is I want to wait for it to shut down and the reason for that is that I want to the game runner is gonna tell the game to draw draw on the surface and I want to not allow my phone to go to another application until this runner has stopped drawing because if it were to go to another application without shutting the thread down the drawing code might still try to draw on the surface which no longer exists and it might crash so I want to make very sure that this method will not exit until the game has uh, successfully stopped drawing which should be very very quick we should be talking about milliseconds here hopefully but to be on the side of caution let's make sure that we wait for the thread to exit here and to do that I'm going to say while runner is not equal to null and in there I'm going to say runner.join runner.join and this is a method that waits for the thread to terminate and that throws an interrupted exception so I'm going to surround with try catch 
and underneath runner dot join I'm going to say runner equals null and what this does is um, we're going to say runner dot shut down and runner dot shut down is setting running to false and it should mean that that loop is going to terminate pretty quickly and then we say okay while runner is not null which it isn't because we just called shut down on it and in fact we checked that it wasn't null up here we're going to we're going to in a loop we'll we'll wait for it to finish and even if join gets interrupted somehow it well if it does we'll catch an interrupted exception and in fact let's just get rid of the stack trace print and we'll go around the loop again and eventually we we'll, we will successfully wait for the thread to finish without it being interrupted without join being interrupted and once it's actually finished and we've successfully run join which just waits for that thread to exit then we set the runner to null and then we stop trying to do we stop trying to wait for it to finish if that makes sense and uh, whether all this is actually necessary I'm not completely sure but uh, I've tried some variations on this code including trying to interrupt the thread rather than having this shutdown mechanism with uh, thread interruptions and um, I couldn't get it to work and in the end I concluded that since this code is a popular way of doing this and since it works I'll stick with this so I think that should all work uh, when a service is created we'll, we'll create a, a new thread object and we'll run it and when the service is destroyed we are going to um, shut down the thread and then we're going to wait for it to finish and what I'm doing is I'm not doing any drawing at the moment I'm just outputting a log message so we should be able to check that that works and as I said I think in the last tutorial it's really worth sorting this out and making sure that all this code fully works before you go on to doing the rest of your game because otherwise you can have a real headache trying to figure out what's going on so I've run my application and we've still got that code in there and it doesn't draw unless I touch the screen so I'll touch the screen and there we go and uh, even though the on touch is in another thread it's in the main user interface thread it's cooperating nicely with my other thread here which is start putting this running message actually and uh, so scroll lock is off so we should be we should be seeing the latest kind of thread dot running here yeah. and we can see the time changing here and now if I just go let's let's go back to the screencast if I just go to the um, home screen we see that it stops so it's, it's very nicely stopped and if I go to my recent apps here then it started again which is great and again I can touch the screen and make the drawing appear and another thing that you should definitely check is um, go to your home screen and if you look at your recent apps at least this is how my phone works and I think this is standard on all Android devices but I'm not really sure because I've only got the one Android device um, and if I now swipe away my application I've exited the application and now I can go to my all apps view and start my application from this screen by touching it at the top there and once again we see that the thread started again and it's behaving nicely so you should check all of that stuff and also check that if, if you call your phone check that it doesn't crash and I, I've checked all that with this code so it should work but I've only checked it on this one device so um, I'd recommend that you give it a go and I, I haven't been able to get this to work really um, in a good way in an emulator and stuff like games is uh, is a lot easier to they're a lot easier to run on a real device than an emulator which is never going to reflect real life fully okay so that's it for this tutorial and until next time happy coding <laughs>